Hey there, Michael Blanc here. You might be seeing some stuff in the headlines like apartment building sales tanked 74%, 3,200 uh, 3, units in foreclosure in Houston. And you're like going, what's going on? Should I maybe wait to get into investing? You know, what's really going on? And I want to kind of talk through what's going on right now and whether you should wait in this market or whether you should uh, take advantage of opportunity. So the one thing that changed really the, the last 12 months, the one thing that has been so different than any time else in history is that the interest rates went up so rapidly, faster than any other time in history. And no one could predict or underwrite that when deals were being bought one or two years ago. And that has created uh, everything that you're seeing right now. And I'm going to kind of debunk that. But the first one is 74% drop in sales, for example, because interest rates have gone up so much that created lower, uh, the, it created higher debt. Uh, cost, cost of capital. And so therefore, to accommodate for that, prices have fallen. Okay. And so what's happening right now is there's a disconnect between sellers who want the price from a year ago and buyers who are using now mortgages are more expensive to buy. There's a disconnect there. We saw the same thing after COVID. We're seeing the same thing in single family houses as well. The volume is super low because no one wants to sell their house right now. They got a great deal, cheap a mortgage, and why, why sell their house even if they want to upgrade? And so the result that you're seeing right now is volume is down. Prices are down and volume is down. Okay, but the odd thing is about it is the fundamentals are strong. There's really nothing different with the fundamentals in, in, uh, in real estate. In fact, there's still this, uh, the housing market. We're still short 6.5 million homes in affordable housing. Why? Because you can't build any more affordable housing. So the fundamentals are super strong. And that's typically the kind of environment that um, that Warren Buffett invests in. And so uh, so should you. You should pay attention about uh, fundamentally strong assets that are temporarily down in price. So that's the, the macroeconomic what's, what's going on here. But then the question is, well, okay, great, Michael. I hear you. I hear the prices are down. And so when prices are down, there's obviously an opportunity somewhere for my fundamentals are strong. But what about a recession? Okay, we're talking about a recession uh, that we're possibly in it, we're about to go into it. What does that mean? Well, really what it means is that you have to, as always, adjust how you analyze deals it's called underwriting. How do you underwrite deals? Well, you're going to use higher interest rates. You might use lower loan to value. If we're going into a recession, that means that people who may be losing their jobs have to move out of a building uh, into something more affordable. Also means that people who are uh, who are living in, in more expensive housing, like houses or class A, are going to have to move into something more affordable. And so they're likely to move into a more full building like you might be owning. Therefore, in your underwriting, you might want to reflect a higher turnover rate than you might normally do. So so the reason that the recession does not really concern me as much is because I like the, the fact that my multifamily performed super well in the last several recessions. Now in 2008, certainly COVID and even in the mid 80s, it just performs really, really well. So I'm less concerned about it. However, it, it does and should affect how you underwrite deals. Now, what about this thing here? This, uh, this foreclosure of 3,200 units. Okay, what is going on with that is just the tip of the iceberg about things to come. And the answer is no, yes and no. But really, no, if really what you're looking at is the biggest wealth creation opportunity of a lifetime. So let's see what's going on here and see what lessons we can learn from this, uh, things like that. First of all, the rising interest rates are squeezing operators, obviously, right? If your cost of capital goes up, then your cash flow goes down. The majority of commercial real estate bought in the last one, two, three years was actually bridge debt. Bridge debt is typically floating rate interest. And then what happened is we, we bought interest rate caps to cap the interest from rising. However, that interest rate cap can go up by 1% or 2%, and that will squeeze the operators. Now, this particular building in, in Houston, it turns out after some due diligence, they got an 80% loan to value, which is very high leverage, and they got no interest rate cap. So they went from 4% to where it is now, 8%, and they're very, very much in the red. Now, the other thing that's happening is interest rate caps are expiring right now, and that is also creating some distress with operators. In this particular building, well, it had no interest rate cap, so it's not really relevant. But what's happening is the ship is sinking, okay? And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to raise more capital. They're trying to refinance or sell, and they can't do any of those things, right? Because no investor is going to put more money into a sinking ship. And that's why that, sink, that, that ship has sunk, and they handed back the keys to the bank. All right, so so that's kind of what's happening right now. These these operators, these poor operators that bought aggressively and did not effectively operate the, the deals, they're getting hurt right now. And so you're going to see a lot more of those kinds of operators 
And you're going to see more distress in the commercial real estate market because how aggressively these were bought. So you should never buy real estate that aggressively. Okay, that's the num number one lesson. You know, surround yourself with a, with a mentor, invest or in passively invest with operators who have a track record, who don't uh, are, are not as aggressive as these guys were. But on the bright side, we're going to see a lot more opportunity like that from operators who were too aggressive and did not operate well. So here's my, my market outlook really here. I think interest rates are going to stay high, but relatively constant. Some argue might even go down. It might go up a little bit, but are not nearly going up as much in the last 12 to 18 months. That was insane. So interest rates are going to stay high, but constant. Okay, If things don't fluctuate wildly like we had in the last 12 to 18 months, we can all work with that. We can work that into our underwriting, and it's not a big deal. Interest rates are higher. Fine. Prices will adjust. Things will go on. The fear in the market that we've had over the last six to nine months will start to abate. And so the credit markets are going to thaw a little bit, and you're going to start seeing some LTVs recover up to more uh, reasonable rates around 75% of loan to value. Rents are going to normalize. Okay, they went up way up. They went up 20, 25% in 2022. Then they kind of drop back down. You'll probably see those normalized right around in line with the inflation rate. And all of this is going to stabilize and, and slowly start increasing prices because I earlier the fundamentals are still very, very strong. So this is why I think you're going to see an amazing wealth creation opportunity, the biggest one of a lifetime, because the fundamentals are strong. Multifamily price are down temporarily, and they will recover once the capital markets will start recovering. And this is, again, this is when Warren Buffett invests. And I think you're going to see a lot. You're going to get a lot of opportunity here in the multifamily space. So my advice to you is, you know, get your education, uh, get educated right now, align yourself with a mentor. If you're passively investing, align yourself with strong operators who are also going to look for opportunity to take advantage of some of these. So hopefully that was helpful. We'll keep you updated next quarter.